What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, one thing about social media is, is you have to get people's attention, and sometimes getting people's attention is getting underneath their skin. And that's what a lot of these shows do is they will have a narrative that will get underneath people's skins and cause a reaction. And apparently, um, Jason, who is a San Francisco 49er fan, I don't know why he bothers with us lowly Cowboys. I don't know why he doesn't just take his win over Green Bay and, and enjoy himself and shut the F up. But he's on this path of trying to beat me down about Josh Allen. Last night during the game, when it looked like Josh Allen was having an incredible game and stuff, he came at me and said, are you ready to apologize about Josh Allen? And I sent an email back to him and said, that didn't age well. He emails me back and he says, Josh Allen doesn't kick field goals. He played enough to win. And that's when I realized he is taking his knowledge straight from people like Dan Orlovsky. Because this thing is, is, is so comical to me. This is so comical how everybody is defending Josh Allen, his career, and everything that he does. Now, I actually like it because Ryan Clark kept the same energy with Josh Allen that he did with Dak Prescott. That's all I'm asking. Keep it consistent. And I want you to listen to this because even though Ryan Clark puts it perfectly, you hear Dan Orlowski literally say he did enough to win. It's not his fault. And we, you know, and there are times that we've had games that are Dak Prescott's fault. I'm not going to lie to you and say there's not. But you can find that with any quarterback in the NFL. You will have some bad games. But to ignore all of the other circumstances like they did with the Dallas Cowboys, we could not stop the run. We could not run the football. If you had those two things, you still scored 32 points without a running game. If you had had a running game like Buffalo had that got, what, 140-some yards, I think it might have been a different re result with the Cowboys. Our running back had 51, 54 yards. That's it. If you had a defense that actually could stop the run and keep them from scoring 27 points in the first half, I know seven of that was a pick six, I get it. But then you got a wide receiver who's checking out, you know, because I, I hear Dan Orlowski saying things like, you know, his receivers dropped the football. Oh, but actually, let, let's we'll dissect it afterwards. Let, let's let's go to the tape. Buff, Buffalo is great. Josh Allen is the only quarterback in the history of the NFL. OK, so I have a question. Who count for 50 touchdowns in a that's, season. That's great. And yeah. not get to the title game. He's oh, done it twice. twice. Josh, you're, Josh, you're big. We're on the goal line. Let's quarterback sneak it. OK, that's great. Good job, Josh. So my, 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 I think he's great. Let me be very clear to all the people. I think Josh Allen is amazing. I think he is ultimately talented. I think he's doing things with the football I've never seen done at that position. He's still not great. He's still not the winner that we always try to make him be. We keep making excuses for him like, like he's LeBron, right? Like before LeBron went to Miami and took his talents yeah. to South Beach and made the big three, this is what we always did. Oh, but he's this and he's that. No, when he does it, he does it. <clears throat> Guess what's about to happen? What? Guess what's about to happen? He we are him. one week away. Yeah. One week from during Josh Allen's tenure, Patrick Mahomes, Going to a ton of Super Bowls, Joe Burrow going yeah, yeah. to a Super Bowl, and, and Lamar. Lamar Jackson going to a Super Bowl, right? What we never do, what we never do is come in here, oh my gosh, Lamar wasn't helped by anybody. Poor Lamar, poor Lamar. No, it's Lamar got to win. Lamar got to figure out a way. That's All right. this season, Patrick got to figure out a way. Patrick got to make these guys around him better. They're dropping the ball, but this team shouldn't look like this. Oh, why is Patrick freaking out? Guess what Patrick has done? He righted the ship. 
Josh Allen had a chance. There it's fine to come in here and say that he played great, but he didn't do enough. Because that's the truth. He didn't that, and do enough. And that's where we disagree. Because I do believe – I I have told you this. What's the score? They lost. <laughs> But they lost, and not because Josh didn't do enough. There's one play that we could point to and say, man, Josh, I would have loved for you to have made a different decision. There's so many other. A How about the fumble, goal, yeah. A, 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 a trying to get two free runners on Patrick Mahomes and get him to the ground. A bomb to a guy who's a one at wide receiver. How about you go with the safer Sherfield. pass the Another guy was over? Sherfield. Make one of those. Make one of those. And then we got a different conversation. There's no. Okay, now, for reference, I want you to listen to this, which was like a week ago. For us was Chris Long, um, longtime NFL star, fascinating insight, making an interesting point there about this. And I, 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 it, it is, it is, I almost felt awkward bringing it up because it sounds so crazy to say do the Cowboys move on from Dak Prescott but there's Troy Aikman the Cowboy legend saying we are defined by winning and losing and I was cr- defined that way yeah unfortunately for Dak it right is that well, well when you're three and zero in Super Bowls it's <laughs> nice. much easier to say I was defined that way but that's the reality I mean Marcus what do you think <laughs> they toted that rock too there Greeny <laughs> uh, I'm not saying no Look, <laughs> Troy Aikman was an all-time great quarterback he no is, one is disputing sure. that the, the, and Dak is a terrific player but the reality is, in the biggest moments, he has him. Uh, Marcus, you sat in that chair. That I'm pointing to where Kimberly is sitting right now. You were sitting right there. I remember it well. You were here in late August. And you said to me, gee, I don't want to hear about what Dak does in the regular season. Uh, to, for me, it is all about yeah. moments. I don't care what he does in the regular season. And then the regular season happens, and we always forget about that stuff because you live in the moment. And he had a magnificent season. But when we got to the part that we all agreed mattered, he had a terrible game. He was flat out terrible on Sunday. Yeah. So, Marcus, now what? Listen, uh, we've had, it, when we talk earlier, more blame to go around. Dan Quinn, obviously yeah. Mike McCarthy. Dak Prescott holds as much at fault as those two guys. And I don't care what yeah, anybody said. Well, the defense gave up 41 points. Great. He does. And I'm not saying he doesn't. Because that's what we are asking. We're asking when it's not perfect. That's why I was so enamored with what, how these conversations would go after this playoff loss about Dak in particular. I said it all season long. Can you respond when it's not going well? Can we walk away saying you are the reason the Dallas Cowboys was able to win that game when everything was going haywire and the defense couldn't get a stop? And nobody could stop anybody. And were you the guy? We saw Josh Allen do it. These conversations <laughs> Not this time. that have revolved around this year. And why do we talk about Josh Allen and not talk about that? Because we saw Josh Allen continue to respond in a playoff situation to Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Back to back to back. Mm-hmm. Back to back. We don't see that from Dak. We see interceptions for pick sixes. We see a blank stare on his face like he don't know what is going on. It looks like the moment is too big for him. Okay. Now, what I heard, and, and I'm, but listen, I'm not saying Dak Prescott played great in the game, but he at least responded. But you could look at this and say you couldn't run the football. Your best receiver had two early drops and for some reason seemed like he checked out your defense couldn't stop anybody and i agree that's when legends are made if you can end up making a difference all those things and issues you didn't hear any of that what you heard was dak prescott had a pick six why did dak prescott have a pick six he's trying to force the ball to a receiver who's checked out to try and get his head back in the damn game because the other guys aren't getting open. And he's trying to make sure I need this guy because he is my ultimate weapon. I got to get him the ball. And you made a bad decision. You made a bad decision in there. And it's easy to go back after the fact and all of us looking at all 22 can say, well, he should have done this or should have done that until you're put into a situation. But be that as it may, that's not the argument I want to have here. There is no quarter 
when it comes to Dak Prescott. You literally, you literally heard Dan Orlowski, who did not even mention that he was fortunate that the fumble that he had after they got, after they ended up getting a, you know, the the ball back from Kansas City's fumble, because they had three drives in a row that came without points. That he's leading, and they say, "Oh well, this deep pass." Had he come, came down, that's not a high percentage pass. Maybe, because we've done this many times too. The Des Bryant catch no catch. It's fourth and one. You need one yard and you need to eat up clock. Instead of trying to go for a ball 40 yards downfield, maybe it would have been prudent since you had the NFL leading rusher and a great offensive line to pick up the first down by running the football and not risking the biscuit and eating the clock up. I still look at that and say that that was not the right play. In the same way, Josh Allen going for the end zone where it's cold as shit outside and not great conditions, the prudent thing would be let me pick up the first down and try and eat up the clock so Pat Mahomes doesn't have time to come back because Pat Mahomes came back at, what, 13 seconds? All of those decisions out there doesn't even mention that it should have been a pick six in that drive where he threw it right to the Kansas City Chiefs player. And he dropped it. Don't mention that. You don't mention the fumble. You don't mention the drives where they stalled and couldn't score and had to keep punting the football. That's all I'm just saying. At least keep it balanced. If you're talking about should Dak go because he doesn't win in the postseason – Josh Allen made it to one, and this was many years ago, one AFC championship. Last year, they scored 10 points against Cincinnati at home. We're in the same boat with these two guys, and this should be a question of Sean McDermott as well. Great regular season team, but yet they're not winning big ones either. I know I'm going to hear a lot from trolls and stuff, and maybe that's kind of cool because it's getting underneath people's skins and making people react because that's what it's about when you're in the media or social media or whatever you want to call that I'm in. (sighs) Have a great day.